buckle your seatbelt, Dorothy. How can you truly enjoy the meal unless you know the flavor? Ah, welcome back, ABL fans. This is Big Earl, your trusted voice in action baseball league analysis, coming at you with our 13th installment of Deep Dive 25. Watch your fingers, because we're about to slice, dice, and dissect all the nuances of this great league. A heartfelt salute to the sports columnist at the Denver Post for your unique and lively reporting style. Your engaging and entertaining approach brings a fresh and outlandish perspective to the coverage of the team. Okay. ABL fanatics, let's do this. Whether it's the Western wildcards, the Eastern powerhouses, or the Central workhorses, we're covering it all. See it for yourself. Ah, the Denver Rocketeers in the Western Division of the ABC, a team that's always been a master of the unexpected in my book. Renowned for their tactical coaching staff and a GM adept at balancing the books while unearthing talent, this team is a silent powerhouse. Keep an eye on them, folks. The Rocketeers have a knack for crafting a winning strategy with patience and precision. If you're one of those folks who can't get enough of the nitty-gritty, the ins and outs, the ups and downs of ABL baseball, then this deep dive is for you. It's like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You never know what treasure you're gonna find. Ah, grab a cup of steaming hot coffee and strap on your ski boots, because we're delving into a team as diverse and invigorating as Denver's renowned outdoor adventures and majestic Rocky Mountains. Question 1. How does the owner's personality and negotiation style influence the team's culture and performance? Ken Ellinger's normal genius. How Denver's steady hand is crafting a silent, deadly masterpiece. In the swirling, twirling world of the ABL, where egos often eclipse ERAs and payrolls can look like phone numbers, Denver Rocketeers owner Ken Ellinger is the eye of the hurricane, a paradoxically normal maestro who's more demanding penny pincher than spendthrift showman. While he gives his GM enough rope to lasso the moon, don't expect him to mortgage the farm for a one-season wonder. Nope, this is a man who measures twice and cuts once, ensuring that every swing, every pitch, and every penny counts. Ellinger's not here to win the offseason. He's here to build a roster that'll do the talking when the cleats hit the diamond. So, don't look for fireworks or fanfare. Just a slow, steady march towards a trophy that speaks louder than any headline. Question 2. What roles do the front office and coaches play in the team's success or struggles? Are they aligned with the owner's vision? Rocketeers Ellinger, the normal maestro of Denver's quiet symphony. Listen up, ABL aficionados. Denver Rocketeers owner Ken Ellinger is the Zen master in a league of firecrackers. Think he's just normal? Think again. This guy's as demanding as a drill sergeant but won't empty the piggy bank like a kid in a candy store. His management style? A blend of Scrooge McDuck and Sun Tzu, penny pinching but tactically brilliant. Players dig him, they find him approachable but no better than to expect a Brink's truck backing up to their driveways. GM Kevin Bradley? He's got room to operate, but rest assured, Big Ken's peering over those bifocals, scrutinizing every move like a hawk eyeing a field mouse. So, what's on the agenda for the Rocketeers this season? Forget marquee names and headline-stealing traits, this team's charting a stealthy course to victory, one carefully calculated step at a time. Keep your eyes peeled, folks. Denver's playing 4D chess while the rest of us are still figuring out checkers. Question 3. How does the team's financial health reflect in its performance? Denver's trifecta of normalcy, front office, coaches, and owner in a cosmic dance of baseball harmony. Hold on to your peanuts and Cracker Jacks, folks. The Denver Rocketeers are operating like a Swiss watch, and you know why? A cosmic alignment, that's why. GM Kevin Bradley is your everyday Joe with a dash of spice, temperamental but personable, like a jalapeno in your grandma's meatloaf. He's the executor of King Ken Ellinger's master plan, and, let me tell you, there are two peas in a normal pod. Then you got the coaches, the wizards behind the curtain, turning Bradley's chest moves into checkmates on the field. They're the Obi-Wans to the players Luke Skywalkers, molding raw talent into Wookiee smashing warriors. And let's not forget about morale, coaches hold the locker room together like duct tape on a leaky pipe. Now, do the stars align with Ellinger's penny pinching, demanding ethos? You bet your sweet bippy they do. Bradley's as tight-fisted as a toddler holding onto candy, and the coaches are marching to the beat of Ellinger's win-at-all-costs drum. So will this Rocketeer spaceship blast off, or blow up on the pad? 
Stay tuned, because in baseball, you're only as good as your next curveball. Question 4. How has fan interest evolved over time, and what does it mean for the team's revenue and player acquisitions? Denver's fiscal dance, where Moneyball meets the Mile High City. Listen, gather round, and let me drop some financial wisdom on you. The Denver Rocketeers are waltzing on a budgetary tightrope, but boy, are they making it look like a Broadway number. With a payroll of just over 7 mil and a kitty of $736,000 for trades, they're balancing between Scrooge McDuck and Jay Gatsby. The fans? Oh, they're all in baby. An 82% interest level and an almost packed stadium that's 89% full. These Denverites are as loyal as a St. Bernard in a snowstorm. The owner, our pal Ken Ellinger, wants to win without emptying Fort Knox, and so far, he's pulling it off. It's like hosting a five-star dinner party on a fast food budget. They've got the fan loyalty, the media bucks, and just enough cash to wheel and deal. Now, the million dollar question, or should I say, the $736,018 question, is can they translate all this fiscal hocus pocus into W's on the scoreboard? Time will tell, but my bet's on these Rocky Mountain magicians to pull a rabbit out of their financial hat. Question 5. What is the current mood among the fan base, and how could it impact the team in the short term? Rocketeer's roller coaster of love. How fan fervor fuels Denver's baseball dreams. Ahoy, ABL aficionados. Buckle up, because the Denver Rocketeers have been on a fan love roller coaster that it make even the most seasoned thrill seeker queasy. Picture this, early 70s, interest is sky high, soaring like a rocket at 90%. Fast forward to the disco era, and boom! We're sinking faster than a lead balloon, dropping to a low of 73%. But hold the phone folks, because the 80s are here, and Denver's back in the game at 82%. What's it mean for the team's coffers and rosters? A packed house of 89% capacity for starters. More chaching from ticket sales and merch, enough to make a Monopoly man blush. Don't expect a Yankees payroll, but do expect them to wheel and deal like a used car salesman on the last day of the month. With fans filling the stands like moths to a flame, expect these Rocketeers to shoot for the moon, or at least a high-profile trade or two. It's a wild ride, folks, and Denver's looking to turn this roller coaster into a one-way trip to victory lane. Question 6. How is the team faring in the league standings, and what factors are contributing to their performance? Rocketeers fan fever, a boon or a time bomb? Listen up, you baseball junkies. The mood in Denver's dugout is hotter than a jalapeno on a summer day. Fans are flocking with an 82% interest level, filling the stadium like it's a rock concert, 89% full baby. But hold your horses, these aren't just any fans. They're a demanding lot, hungry for dingers, thirsting for strikeouts, and not settling for anything less than a win. In the short term, these pumped up peeps could turn those empty 11% seats into a gold mine of ticket and merch sales. The players? They're feeding off this electric vibe like bees on nectar. But beware, Rocketeers! This fan fever is a double-edged sword. Make a wrong move, and you've got a stadium full of armchair managers ready to dissect your every play. So, will Denver ride this wave of fan love to glory, or will they wipe out and face the fickle wrath of their faithful? The next few games could tip the scale, and let me tell you, it's gonna be a nail-biter. Question 7. What are the team's odds of making the playoffs on a divisional and conference level? Denver's high-wire act, Rocketeers teeter between glory and the abyss. Sit down, grab some popcorn, and let's talk about the Denver Rocketeers, the baseball equivalent of a Swiss Army knife, useful but not flashy. 11 wins, 8 losses, and a winning percentage hovering just below 600 folks, these Rocketeers are as balanced as a tightrope walker on a windy day. Their scoring runs like a pinball wizard, but also letting a few through the wickets, with a run differential that's skinnier than a pencil. They're kings in their castle with a 7-3 home record, but more like jesters on the road at 4-5. Playoff odds? Call them Schrodinger's team, both alive and dead until you open the box, with a 14.1% divisional shot and nearly a 30% overall chance. Don't get me started on their ELO rating, they're as average as mom's meatloaf, but with a dash of something that keeps you coming back. And listen, their batters are pulling their weight, but the pitchers need a pep talk or maybe a new strategy. So, are the Rocketeers playoff bound or a flash in the pan? Your guess is as good as mine, but this high wire act is must-see TV. Question 8. How do base runs and ELO ratings paint a picture of the team's true strengths and weaknesses? Denver's playoff roulette. Spin the wheel. Take your chances. Alright folks, 
put on your betting hats because the Denver Rocketeers are rolling the dice in the game of playoff roulette. With divisional odds sitting at a mere 14.1%, they're like the guy at the poker table with a pair of sevens, could win, but don't bet the farm. Now, zoom out to the conference level, and bam, a 29.9% shot at the playoffs. Not quite a coin flip, but close enough to make you believe in magic. Hey, it's early in the season, so these numbers will dance around like a cat on a hot tin roof. But here's the kicker, one hot streak, and then the talk of the town, one cold snap, and it's better luck next year. So what's it gonna be, Denver? Time to either go big or go home. Question 9. What does the team's war indicate about its most valuable players? Swinging for the fences and striking out on the mound. The Rocketeers' war story. Baseball fans, grab your peanuts and Cracker Jack because Denver's got a Jekyll and Hyde act that's stealing the show. Listen closely, their batter war is 2.22. Folks, that's like having a rock star wailing on a guitar solo at every at-bat. But hold your applause, because their pitcher war is sinking faster than a lead balloon at minus 0.09. Yikes! That's like having a drummer who can't keep a beat. So, what's the final score? A total war of 2.13, but don't let that number fool you. The batters are the heartthrobs of this boy band, while the pitchers are the forgotten backup dancers. Denver, your batters might be ready for the big stage, but if you want to keep the fans screaming, you better find some pitchers who can hit the high notes. Question 10. How have injuries impacted the team's performance and depth? The disabled list shuffle, Denver's dance with the injury devil. Ah, Denver, you've been bit by the injury bug and it ain't just a love bite. Listen up, ABL aficionados, we've got three Rocketeers sidelined, racking up a whopping 63 days on the DL. It's like having a garage band with a guitarist, drummer, and the lead singer all called in sick. And get this, they're stashing $78,000 in a piggy bank label Do Not Touch. It's money that's just gathering dust, not RBIs or strikeouts. Now, you remember that cringeworthy pitcher war? Could be some aces are in the sick bay instead of on the mound. And don't forget, nothing says you're up, rookie like a bench thinner than a one-hit wonder's career. So, Denver, you're learning the hard way. Depth charts aren't just for decoration, they're your battle plan when the injury bug comes buzzing. Question 11. What do the team's batting statistics reveal about its offensive capabilities? Swinging in the mile high, Denver's offensive fireworks show. Hold on to your peanuts and Cracker Jacks, folks. Denver's batting lineup is like a 4th of July fireworks show, sparklers, Roman candles, and a few big boomers. With 95 runs on the board and a plate appearance list as long as a grocery receipt, they've got pitchers sweating like they're in a spelling bee. Batting 278? That's not just knocking on the door, that's kicking it down. 13 homers and 34 doubles? Call the fire department because these bats are hot. Don't even get me started on their OBP of 349. These guys are more social than a politician in an election year. They love getting to first base. Sure, they've grounded into 13 double plays, but hey, nobody's perfect. Advanced stats? Oh, they've got him. An OPS of 754 and a WOBA of 347, numbers that'll make a sabermetrician swoon. In short, Denver's lineup is like a Swiss Army knife, versatile, dangerous, and always ready to carve up a defense. Question 12. How does the pitching staff stack up against divisional and conference competition? Denver's pitching, more leaky faucet than steel trap. Holy smokes folks, Denver's pitching staff is like a leaky faucet in the middle of the night, annoying and in dire need of fixing. With an ERA of 4.61 and a FIP even worse at 5.21, these guys are handing out runs like free samples at a grocery store. Walk rate? A staggering 9.24%, making it feel like a charity walkathon to first base. And strikeouts? Only 10.4%. That's less impressive than a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Where are the aces? Let's not even talk about the 20 dingers they've allowed. Those balls are probably still in orbit. Sure, they've got a ground ball rate of 53.5%, but even a broken clock is right twice a day. Opponents are feasting with a batting average of 279 and an OBP of 360. If this pitching staff was a movie, it'd be a horror flick for Denver fans. Better call the bullpen or the repairman, because something's gotta give. Question 13. Are the team's fielding statistics a strength or a weakness? Denver's fielding, the steady drummer in a rock band. Alright, sports fans, let's talk Denver's glove work. 
They're not winning any gold gloves, but they're not exactly jebbling balls like a clown at a kid's party either. A total zone rating of 4.36? That's like the bass player in a rock band, solid but not stealing the spotlight. Defensive efficiency at 0.709? They're converting enough grounders and pop-ups into outs to keep the game rolling. And only seven errors? That's steadier than your grandma's knitting. Now, their outfield arms have four assists and a rate of 0.79 per 100 innings, so they're not exactly gunslingers, but they're no pushovers. And let's tip our caps to the catchers. A 37.5% RTO means they're gunning down runners like a sheriff in a western flick. All in all, Denver's fielding is like the drummer in a rock band, keeping the beat, rarely off-tempo, and not botching the solo. Sure, they're not the stars of the show, but without them, the whole gig falls apart. Question 14. What do base running stats say about the team's tactical approach? Denver's base running, a high-stakes poker game with mixed results. Hold on to your seats, ABL aficionados, because Denver's base running is as unpredictable as a mountain weather forecast. 14 stolen bases? Sure, they're bolting like a cat on a hot tin roof. But wait, 10 caught stealing? That's right folks, they're getting snagged like a fish on a badly cast line. With a stolen base percentage of 58.3%, they're rolling the dice more often than a gambler with a twitchy hand. They've got plenty of singles and walks to set the table, but that WSB of minus 0.76 says they're leaving a lot of food uneaten. It's like they're trying to bluff their way to the pot with a pair of twos. So, are they daring innovators or just reckless adventurers? Either way, they better tweak that strategy unless they want to keep running themselves out of innings. Question 15. Who are the standout performers in batting, and what do their stats reveal? Denver's triple threat. From grizzled vets to whippersnappers, these bats are booming. Listen up, ABL fanatics. Denver's batting lineup is as diverse as a Colorado landscape, from the towering Rockies to the Flatlands. First up, we got old Bobo in Yerva, 39 years young and showing the kids how it's done with an OBP so high it needs an oxygen mask. He's the Yoda of the on-base percentage people. Then there's the young gun, Xavier Little. At 23, this kid's got more energy than a double espresso, and his numbers, like a 372 OBP and 790 OPS, are screaming, watch out, world. Last but not least, we've got 25-year-old Javier Martinez, who's as consistent as a Swiss watch. His OBP of 384 is nothing to sneeze at. These three musketeers give Denver a potent mix of age, speed, and finesse. From the geezer to the greenhorns, this trio's got the bases covered, literally. Question 16. Who are the key figures in the pitching staff, and how do they influence games? Denver's three amigos, the moundsmen making noise, and ground balls, in ABL. Hold on to your peanuts and Cracker Jack, ABL fans. Denver's Rocketeers pitching staff is like a classic rock band, seasoned, reliable, and they know how to bring the house down. Leading the ensemble is Dave D'Angelo, 30 years old and sporting an ERA as scrumptious as a slice of apple pie, 3.14 folks. This guy's ground ball rate could put a mole to shame. Next up, John the Wolfman Wolf, who not only has an ERA of 3.60, but also knows how to fan batters at a 6.30 strikeout per nine clip. Last but never least, Damian Serrano, the 33-year-old enigma. Sure, his ERA's hanging out at 5.40, but the man can induce a ground ball faster than you can say double play. All three boast positive wars, making him the reliable heart of the Rocketeers' pitching lineup. So if you're looking for flash and sizzle, you might be in the wrong place. But if you dig consistency in grounders, welcome to the Mile High Pitching Club. Question 17. Who excels in base running and fielding, and how do they impact the game's outcome? Denver's silent assassins, base stealers and glove wizards who make or break games. Ladies and gents, feast your eyes on Denver's Rocketeers, the team with players so slick, they could steal your wallet while making a diving catch, and you'd thank him for it. First, in the base running department, we've got a couple of Houdinis. Bobo Inierva, at the ripe age of 39, is swiping bases like a cat burglar in the night, 100% success rate, folks. Then there's whippersnapper Manuel Payan, another stealthy thief, also boasting a perfect steal rate. Switch gears to the leather, and we've got Jesus Lego, the man with the golden glove in right field. He's hoovering up anything that comes his way. Xavier Little? More like Xavier a lot, cause he's covering the outfield like a blanket. And let's not forget about Bobby Scott, who's as solid as they come at third base. 
These are the unsung heroes, the guys making the highlight reels without swinging the lumber. So the next time a Rocketeer steals a base or snags a liner, remember, you saw it here first. Question 18. What does the team's age demographic reveal about its experience and future potential? Denver's fountain of youth and old guard, a blend of sage and swagger. Listen up, baseball aficionados. The Denver Rocketeers are like a well-aged scotch with a dash of youthful soda, strong and sophisticated, yet effervescent. The MLB roster is on the cusp of the Big 3-0, indicating a bunch of grizzled warriors, especially on the mound where the average age hovers above 30. But don't let that fool you. Their AAA lineup is bubbling with youngsters ready to step into the big shoes. And speaking of youth, their AA and single-A squads are practically brimming with kids who could be the next big thing. It's like a baseball version of a family reunion, from grandpa to the toddlers. The Rocketeers have got a balanced portfolio that would make any Wall Street guru envious. The mix of wise old heads and spry young legs means they're ready to compete now, and they've got an eye on the future. So whether you're into the nostalgia of vinyl records or the thrill of the latest tech, this team's got something for everyone. Question 19. Who has had the best batting and pitching games, and what do these performances signify for the team? Rocketeers Showstoppers, a tale of bats and arms. Alright, ABL diehards, feast your eyes on this. Denver Rocketeers own Bobo Nierva and John Wolf have put the star in all-star performances. Nierva, the Sultan of Singles, turned April 14th into a one-man hit parade against Cincinnati. For hits and four RBIs, this man was more dialed in than a sniper on a rooftop. Then we've got Wolf, the pitching Picasso, who painted the corners against Portland on April 24th, eight innings of nearly flawless artistry, six Ks, and just one measly run allowed. If this guy were any cooler, he'd be a popsicle. What's it all mean? Nierva shows the Rocketeers can pummel you with precision, while Wolf proves they can also lull you into a swing and miss siesta. This team's got more ways to win than a Swiss army knife has tools. So, buckle up folks. The Rocketeers are ready to launch, and they've got the pilots to steer him to victory. Question 20. What does your gut tell you about this team in the 1981 championship season and the Grand Tournament of Champions? Rocketeers Road to Glory, built for the big show. Listen up, you hardball aficionados. If you're not betting on the Denver Rocketeers this season, you might as well toss your money into a wishing well. Why? I'll tell you why. This team's got more layers than a lasagna at an Italian family reunion. You want veterans? They've got seasoned warriors like D'Angelo and Wolf, who've seen more pitches than a used car salesman. Balance? These guys are more balanced than a gymnast on a tightrope, sluggers, speedsters, and golden gloves all over the diamond. Fan base? Let me tell you, the tenth man in the stands can scream louder than a jet engine. And don't even get me started on their financial wizardry. They could buy a yacht, but instead might just add another ace at the trade deadline. Oh, and their farm system? It's brimming with was kids itching to take the field. But here's the cherry on top. They've got clutch players who can turn a game around quicker than you can say Grand Slam. When the Grand Tournament of Champions rolls around, don't be surprised if it's the Rocketeers bathing in champagne and hoisting that shiny cup. Mark my words, this team's got champion written all over it. Question 21. What is the team's history in the Grand Tournament of Champions? Rocketeers G2C Saga, a roller coaster of triumphs and heartaches. Hold on to your ball caps, folks, because the Denver Rocketeers' history in the Grand Tournament of Champions is a thrill ride that puts roller coasters to shame. We're talking about a team that burst onto the scene like a bat out of Hades in 72 and 73, snagging American Baseball Conference championships like they were picking apples. And let's not forget the 73 Grand Championship. Yeah, they set Chicago ablaze and danced on the ashes. But don't go thinking it's all peaches and cream. They've tasted the bitterness of defeat, too. Got silenced by the Pittsburgh Express in 74 like a mime in a shouting match. But listen, this ain't a team that hangs its head. It's a team that takes a licking and keeps on ticking. With a legacy like that, you'd better believe the 1981 squad has some big cleats to fill. And something tells me, they're up to the challenge. The fans are restless, the front office is sweating like a pitcher in a 3-2 count, and the owner's got his eyes on the prize. Oh, but don't count out the 1981 squad. They're a cocktail of young blood and grizzled vets, shaken not stirred, okay? Nierva's bat is hotter than a jalapeno, and Wolf's pitching could freeze coffee. The fans? They're as hopeful as a kid on Christmas Eve. But remember, even Santa checks his list twice. 
Does history repeat itself or do the Rocketeers write a brand new chapter? Question 22. What is the team's history in previous seasons? Rocketeers roller coaster ride. From heights to depths and back again? Strap in folks, cause the Denver Rocketeers history is a wild, stomach-churning roller coaster of ups, downs, and loopy loops. They kicked off their ABL journey with fireworks, blitzing through the early 70s like a bull in a china shop. Heck, they were the grand champs in 73. But then, bam, they hit rock bottom faster than a dropped hot dog, with wins and fans disappearing quicker than a cold beer on a hot day. By the late 70s, they were stuck in a rut thicker than ballpark mustard. Fast forward to 81, and there's a flicker of hope, like finding a 20-year-old jeans. With a decent start, booming bats, and a hefty $7 million in the bank, it feels like they're staging a comeback tour. So, tell me, are they finally tuning their guitars right, or is this another one-hit wonder season? Question 23. What's your take on last season? The 1980 Rocketeers, the Purgatory Squad or a stepping stone to heaven? Ah, 1980, a year that left the Rocketeers and their fans stuck in baseball purgatory. Sure, they flirted with respectability, ending up with a 78-84 and 84 record. But let's be real, this wasn't a squad that had Cinderella dreaming of a glass clique. The fans turned up in droves, probably praying for a miracle with every hot dog and foam finger they bought. On the cash side, they were more loaded than a ballpark nacho, but the on-field product was as bland as a Cracker Jack without the prize. Pitching was like a B-movie, entertaining but forgettable. And the bats? Might as well have been wiffle ball sticks with a 244 average. The season felt like a seven-game stretch, promising start, mediocre middle, and an end that left you wondering, is this all there is? So, was 1980 a sign of brighter days, or just a flashlight in the dark, endless tunnel of mediocrity? Question 24. How does what happened in the 1980 season reflect on the 1981 early campaign? 1981 Rocketeers, from 1980's tease to 1981's triumph? Ah, the 1981 season for the Rocketeers is shaping up like the second act of a Broadway play. No one's sure if it's going to be a timeless classic or a forgettable flop. Last year's nearly 500 escapade left fans frothing for more, and early signs point to a team that's sipping ambition like it's a cold brew on a hot day. But hold the foam finger, folks. That pesky ERA, higher than a Coors Field nosebleed seat, still hangs like a dark cloud over the mound. The good news? The bats are hotter than jalapeno popcorn, and if that keeps up, pitchers might just need to be good enough. With the coffers full, don't be shocked if we see some mid-season wizardry from the front office. So, is 1981 gonna be the year they finally kick down the door to glory, or will they once again be the bridesmaids, tossing bouquets from the playoff sidelines? Buckle up, it's gonna be a wild ride. Question 25. What is your take on the current roster? Rocketeer's 1981 lineup. A cocktail of firepower and fizzle. Oh, strap in, ABL fans, because the Rocketeer's 1981 season is like a roller coaster designed by a mad scientist, thrilling highs, gut-churning lows, and a few loops thrown in just to mess with ya. Let's talk fireworks. Bobo Inirva's bat is hotter than a chili pepper in a heat wave, and Manuel Payan is the young gun with the patience of a chess master. But hold the confetti, folks. The pitching staff is a Jekyll and Hyde act. You've got your aces like Wolf, and then you've got your wild cards with ERA so high they need oxygen masks. The bullpen? More like a bull penalty box with those inflated ERAs. And let's not forget the walking wounded. Three key pitchers on the IL could mean the mound becomes a mound of trouble. The Rocketeers have bats that could light up the night sky, but the question is, will their pitching douse the flames? So, are these Rocketeers ready for liftoff or are they just stockpiling fireworks for a show that never starts? Well, there you have it, your up close and personal deep dive into the Denver Rocketeers. We've dissected their strengths, weaknesses, and everything in between. We've peeked into the owner's suite, dug into the dugout, and even scoped out the fans in the bleachers. And let me tell you, what a ride it's been. Like a well-pitched game, we've covered all the bases, but remember, baseball is a game of unpredictability. Just when you think you've got it figured out, it throws you a curveball. Ah, the Denver Rocketeers, a team that's been methodically playing through the regular season like a master chess player. But when it comes to the grand tournament of champions, they've often resembled a wildcard entry. 
Will they harness their calculated strategy and seasoned players to seize the spotlight, or are they fated to remain an enigmatic contender in the ABL's grand competitive saga? The Rocketeer's tale is far from over, and the next chapter promises to be a page-turner. Big Earl here, folks. Keep your eyes peeled for future reports as we navigate through the twists and turns of another gripping ABL season. So, whether you're a fan of the Rocketeers, or just love the game, the best is yet to come. Until next time, this is the game. See it for yourself. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. You stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. <laughs>